In this episode, we are going to examine exactly what happens to a device in an overvoltage condition that causes it to fail. In this case, it's a switch mode power supply that was severely overvoltaged until it popped. Should be interesting. I got a call today from a customer who informed me that his electrician had uh, cooked his power supply for his uh, his TV box. So he asked if I could replace it and give him a new one. I figured I'd bring this one home and just see what exactly the electrician did to make this thing go pop. So first, I'm going to plug it in and we'll verify this thing's actually dead. So there's power. And sure enough, we have no power. So, let's uh, crack this thing open and see what went boom inside. Now these, these cases here are, are generally welded together. So I said I find something that I can split the case open with. Hammers usually do a pretty good job. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is good. This is toasty. We've had we've had major flames in this thing. If we look down here on the circuit board. We can see some charring. Been just a bit warm in there. Let's see if I can get the board out. There's the board. Let's get a closer look at this thing. So it looks like what may have happened on this unit is that they may have lost their neutral. And if you lose your neutral on... Now this does obviously doesn't apply over in, in countries that have single phase 220 such as uh, over in the UK, for example. But uh, in North America, we have two phase 240 volt, which is basically 120 volts two phases of 120 volts uh, with respect to ground or neutral. So we're on a three wire uh, 240 volt system where you can have your neutral and two hots which will give you 240 volts between the two hots and 120 volts between one hot and, and neutral or grounded respectively. Our neutral is grounded. Our neutral are, are tied to ground. So what happens in the event that you lose the neutral connection to your your panel, say the hydro or your electric feed neutral fails, is that you will end up with 240 volts across the plugs because the neutral will float and it will be drawn to whichever side of whichever leg is drawing the most current. So you'll end up with some plugs that have got less than 120 volts across them. The, the side of the, the phase that's under the most load, the voltage will sag, it will drop. But the phase that has the less balance or the lower side of the load, the voltage will go up. And if you're plugged into the side that is going up in potential, well, you end up with damage like this. And I think probably What's happened on this is just this, this is an MOV, this is a metal oxide varistor, it's used in here as a form of surge suppression. I think probably all that is wrong with this thing is that the MOV has shorted and when they go, they go destructively with a big bang and lots of smoke and sparks and they sputter. It's shorted and it's taken out, I'm going to assume that that's a fuse. Let's just take a look and see, because if we look on the bottom of the circuit board here, what we will see is here's our two wires going in. This is our neutral, it's the white wire. And this is our hot, which is the black wire. If we look on the back side of the board, we'll see that the hot wire goes directly into this component on the end, which I'm gonna call a fuse, even though I can't see what it is because it's burned. And then the other side of that fuse, as you can see, 
there's the MOV directly across it, and then you end up going into your choke and your filters. So here's your here's your filter capacitor and here's your choke. And then over here will be your diodes underneath here. Those are your full wave full wave bridge, which rectifies your raw um, B plus, which is stored on, up in this capacitor, and that operates the oscillator. Here's the chopper transistor, and uh, here's your transformer and uh, optocoupler down here. This little capacitor is part of the oscillator circuit. This is going to be the diode, I believe. Yep, that's going to be a dual diode on this side to rectify the 50 or 60 kilohertz signal that's coming out from the transformer, the stepped down chopped signal, chopped waveform. And here's our output capacitor. So I bet you the only thing that's wrong with this little power supply is this MOV is, is popped, it's shorted, and this fuse is open. So let's just take a look with the meter. And uh, what I can do to, to see if, I, if I'm right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take out that MOV and we'll uh, jump the fuse and see if it fires up. And I say jump the fuse because I'm not repairing this power supply. I just want to see if, if there's anything else blown, whether it'll actually start up. I bet it will. And then, I mean, it's, it's going in the garbage anyway, so I'm not going to bother replacing the fuse. I don't have one, and these things are a dime a dozen. I got lots of them, so I'm not, I'm not about to repair this thing. But for diagnostics, let's just see if I'm correct. So we'll hook up the meter, one side here, to the fuse and verify that the fuse is, in fact, open. And if I hook up the meter to the neutral side and go to the MOV, we, in fact, are shorted. So let's... Uh, Let's cut the MOV out because it will operate without the MOV. So we'll just take out our, our new Klein snips here. They're brand new, right? I, I lost my snips at work. So I, I got myself a new pair. I took my ones that I had that were, that I've been using for a while. I took my own personal pair in to work and brought the new ones home because these are nice and sharp. And then if I lose the next pair, I'll take these ones in and get myself another pair. So we'll just cut this out of here. Okay, that's gone. And now we'll check for short again, and we'll see that I'm sure that the short is now gone, which it is, right? Nothing showing up on the meter, no shorts, right? Put the meter there. That was shorting before, it's no longer shorting. And now I need, just need to uh, jumper this fuse here. So for that, I will turn on my soldering iron and we'll just solder a little string, single strand of wire so there still will be protection if something were to short it'll pop but it's not going to be any type of uh, of, um, of current <laughs> we aren't going to know how much current it's going to do but I'm just going to get a little single strand of wire and we'll put it across here because again this is just to see if this thing's going to work and then this thing's going to go to the recycling so let's get my iron a second here to warm up and then we'll get that uh, fuse taken care of and right now, for all of you that are ready, ready to hit that thumbs down button because I'm going to disable the fuse, take your thumbs down and stick it up your arse, okay? I really don't care. I'm doing this for demonstration purposes only. I don't need to hear anybody whine about how I'm defeating a safety device. As I've already stated at least twice, I'll state it again. This unit's not going back into service. I'm just going to verify that the unit is going to work. And that is the only problem that happened on this was the varistor popped and it took out the fuse. So for all you snobs out there that are going to jump all over me for bypassing a fuse, I don't give an S-H-I-T, okay? Stuff it, you know where. Now obviously, if there was a problem, if there was a short in this this little single little single strand of wire that I just put on is going to fail. It's not going to cause a fire. It's not going to cause an explosion. It's not going to do anything. If this if there's a short, if something else on here is going to fail, that's just going to pop just like a fuse.
So we'll just kind of stuff the adapter kind of back together a bit. We'll put the meter in uh, voltage measurement mode and I'll, I'll hook it up here so that you'll see right away when I plug it in whether we've got any power. Okay, power is off on the power on the bench right now. We'll plug in the adapter and 12 volts. Thumbs up. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.